cast your mind back to the early 2000s. It really was an exciting time for personal computers, and honestly, the sight of seeing a laptop out in the wild, at least for me, was pretty darn exciting. I even used to modify pizza boxes so that they would resemble laptops. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Anyway, today we're going to be restoring a Toshiba Satellite 4090 XCDT that I got off of eBay. The box has arrived, so I think it's time we open it up. The amount of random laptops I have piled up is getting a bit out of hand, so you'll see a few more videos like this in the coming weeks. Looks like the seller made use of an old motherboard box. Basically, just placing the laptop in the box with next to no protection. Lifting the lid reveals that it is quite dirty, and we'll be sure to fix that later in the video. The Toshiba Satellite was quite a feature-rich device for its time. Lots of audio jacks, built-in 56K modem with a neat little flippy connector, a singular USB port, albeit quite slow considering it's a 1.1 variant, and an exhaust fan. A good portion of laptops from the late 90s were still passively cooled, but the 400MHz Celeron here clearly needed a bit of help staying cool. Booting up the Toshiba took quite a bit of time, well over two minutes. Looks like the original owner was a fan of Dragon Ball Z. The slowness might partly be explained by the low 64 megabytes of RAM, the original amount this laptop would have shipped with back in 1999. Looking in my computer, no CD-ROM drive seems to show up. The hard disk has a capacity of 6 gigabytes. This is also likely to be the original drive. 3D Pinball came pre-installed on Windows 2000. Windows NT 4.0 was the first version of Windows that it was bundled with. To try and speed things up, I ran the Disk Defragmenter tool. This didn't have any noticeable effect, so I'll be sure to upgrade the RAM during this video. It also seems as if the display takes a while to warm up and reach its peak brightness. Just take a look at the difference. After being on standby, it is noticeably darker. There is also some old MS Paint art on here. Old laptops like these truly are time capsules. Someone actually watched Rise of the Planet of the Apes on here, meaning this laptop was used up until at least 2011. So the laptop at the very least does work, albeit quite slowly. Anyway, let's open it up and see exactly what's inside. Unsurprisingly, the main battery no longer holds a charge. A replacement can be bought for around 30 Australian dollars, however, it didn't arrive in time for filming this video. There is a RAM cover on the back of the laptop. Taking it off reveals an empty SD RAM slot. I'll be sure to find a stick of RAM to chuck in here. The laptop came with a 10100 PCMCIA Ethernet card, so I'll be able to hook this up to the internet. There's also a small lock that stops the card from being yanked out accidentally. To remove the keyboard, I have to pry up on this plastic piece. There are about five plastic tabs that must be released before it'll come off. A single Phillips head screw holds the keyboard in place. The keyboard is attached to the motherboard with a long ribbon cable, which took a bit of fiddling to release from the connector. The 56K modem was next to come out. Holding it in place were three Phillips head screws, and after carefully wiggling the module upwards, it detached from the motherboard. I was lucky enough to find a repair manual for this specific laptop online. It's linked in the description if you want to take a look. I also detached the speakers and display cables that were connected to the motherboard. Flipping it over, I removed the last of the screws holding the casing together. The process so far has been pretty easy, aside from the nut holding the hard disk screw in place breaking off, making it a bit difficult to remove. Now the top half can finally be removed. Before we see what's inside this old laptop, I'd like to tell you that GameFun365 reached out to sponsor this video. Product keys for games and applications can be quite expensive, but with GameFun365, they don't have to be. They've got great prices on keys that work globally for Windows 10 to Microsoft Office and many more. Oh, and if you use the coupon code P20, you get a further 20% off your order. Links are in the description below if you want to find out more. This is what the internals of the laptop look like. The processor and heatsink are on a daughter board that connect directly to the motherboard, meaning you could technically replace this CPU. It's good to see that the capacitors don't appear to have bulged at all. I like the design internally. It's very modular with lots of easily removable parts. 
Now we can see why the screw holding the hard disk caddy in place wouldn't come out. To remove the screw, I gripped the nut with a pair of pliers. With all screws removed, I slid the IDE hard disk out. It's a 4200 RPM, 6.4 gigabyte Toshiba hard drive. Removing the CPU heatsink was next. It looks like quite a solid piece of metal. With the fan unplugged, it came out quite easily. There are several metal fins next to the exhaust fan. I guess this helps with cooling. Laptop cooling has definitely come a long way. The CPU daughter board was also easy to remove. The 400 MHz Celeron CPU was often sold in cheaper laptops alongside the mobile variant of the Pentium 2, usually clocked at the same speed. I'd remove the heat sink on here, but it's riveted in place, and I'd likely destroy it by accident. To remove the dust and debris that had built up inside the laptop, I gently brushed it down with a toothbrush. My trusty vacuum cleaner was used to suck it all up. Using some isopropyl alcohol, I cleaned out the exhaust vent. The single brushless fan wasn't all that clogged up, which was really good to see. The pair of stereo speakers also looked pretty serious in this laptop. Here comes the fun part. To start cleaning the filthy keyboard, I brushed off all the dust and debris with a toothbrush. There's quite a bit built up under the keys as well, so I tried to be thorough with my brushing. Step 2 once again involves a toothbrush. This time with some isopropyl alcohol to remove gunk like spilt food and drink that's visible on the keycaps. As I always say, keyboards can be quite unhygienic. Case in point, this keyboard. Fellas, keeping your nub clean is pretty important. The one we have here is in dire need of a clean off. It was a little bit tricky to clean and the rough texture that makes it easier to grip did start to come off. The rejuvenation included me painting it with a marker. I did this several times, cleaning it off with isopropyl alcohol as well. This eventually stained the rubber, leaving it with a colour more closely resembling the green colour that it should. There it is, back on the freshly cleaned out keyboard. I'd happily eat my dinner off of this now. I decided to glue the hard disk cover nut back in place. After a few hours it should be nice and strong. It's now time to reassemble the laptop. I love that nearly every component is replaceable and pretty easy to get to. I can't really say the same for a lot of laptops these days. With any luck, this will still work once I put it back together. With the top casing back on with the screws, modem and keyboard reinstalled, I thought it was time I gave it a good clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. This is starting to look like a much cleaner laptop. I got into every nook and cranny I could find. Considering this was used well up until 2011, it could be a whole lot worse. The screen was also quite dirty. I wouldn't be surprised if it had never been cleaned before. A damp paper towel followed by a microfiber cloth and some lens cleaner got it looking a whole lot better. We still have a very big problem. The hinge is so stiff that it feels like it's going to snap. To open up the display assembly, I have to remove two hidden screws. With a spudger tool, I carefully unclip the plastic bezel. To help give the hinge strength, a metal piece runs partway up the display. I began by removing the screws that held the screen in place. They were quite loose, which was a bit concerning. I also added some thread locker to the screws that hold the reinforcing bracket in place. With a tiny amount of super glue and thread locker, I put the main screws back in. To help loosen the stiff hinges, I applied some WD-40. At first the hinges were still very tight. I tried to avoid snapping the screen off. After a second spray, everything started to move a whole lot smoother. Then all I had to do was clip the casing back on, put the screws back in and reapply the covers for the screws. Now that's much better. Last of all, I installed an additional 128 megabytes of SD RAM, bringing the system's total to 192 megabytes. Thankfully, the laptop still turns on. My next problem was the laptop wasn't reading CDs while in Windows. The CD drive would show up fine in Device Manager, but the CD drive would not show up in my computer. And if you put a CD in, nothing would happen. To rule out the possibility that the CD drive is at fault, I tried booting into Microsoft Windows XP, and it did so without any problems. Ultimately, I did try other fixes that were suggested to me, but none of them seemed to work. The next course of action was to reinstall Windows 2000. Creating the install CD was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, as information on doing so was quite scarce and I've left a link in the description below to the tutorial that I used. After a while I put the product key in and finished the install. Now we've got a fresh install of Windows 2000. 
All the drivers seem to work and we've got internet connectivity. It's now been restored to its former glory. A bit of an improvement I must say. So let's try out some games and see just what this laptop is capable of. I'm pretty sure that brought back some memories for people of a certain age. We've got the Toshiba running Service Pack 4 and it now has 192 megabytes of RAM. It's a lot more zippy than it was before. I had planned on playing some graphically intensive games on this laptop to really push it to its limits, but the 2.5 megabyte Trident 9525 DVD integrated graphics card was honestly not up to the task. That or I was having some weird driver problems. The integrated graphics seemed to lack a lot of Direct 3D support, so seemingly all games ran in software rendering mode or not at all. Giving us some less than ideal results as seen here. I tried all the possible driver options that I could find, none of which made the gaming experience any better. This may have something to do with me running Windows 2000 on this laptop. I spent many hours trying to resolve this driver problem, but I simply had no luck whatsoever. Once again, I tried four different driver installations and none of them improved the problem. I also tried the original Monster Truck Madness, which also had to run in software rendering mode. This is barely playable. Its inability to play 3D games aside, you can still express your artistic talent in Microsoft Paint. Now I'd hang that on my wall. One commenter on Twitter suggested I make Windows 2000 look as bad as I possibly could. Bright pink, Comic Sans, what more could a growing boy possibly need? The pre-installed version of Internet Explorer does work, but fails to load any web pages. I would have looked for a newer browser, but I simply ran out of time. Either way, we've got this really cool relic of the late 90s. Feature rich and with a high resolution 1024x768 display, this laptop back in 1999 was not cheap. A nearly identical model with a DVD drive cost a sizable 2400 US dollars. The inclusion of a pointing nub in place of a trackpad was very much of its time. I'm personally a big fan and the keyboard on here feels great to type on. As a last ditched effort, I thought I would try installing Windows XP. Although I haven't actually filmed that part yet, so I'm going to let future me tell you how that turned out. Even with a newer driver set designed for Windows XP, 3D gaming wasn't any better. There were some bits of cosmetic damage I couldn't fix. I'll also be reinstalling Windows 2000 back on here. As a young boy, I always dreamed of owning a laptop like this. Well, maybe one that's slightly better for gaming. There's just something so appealing with the design of this laptop, and I'm very glad that I was able to restore it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm glad to finally have this video done and uploaded for all of you to see. There were a lot of hurdles I had to overcome, and I haven't exactly mentioned all of them in this video, but put it this way, some of them made me quite frustrated. Also, big thank you to all of the channel members that are supporting me monetarily on YouTube. If you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.